But finally today, as we start preparing for our New Year's parties, it's time to look back on a year that's been filled with so many good things, a few bad things as well, so much that's dramatic, and so much that leaves us anxiously looking into 1974. But the happiest man of all in 1973 must have been Bob Stoker of Sunderland, although the year's not finished too well for him. Has there ever been a prouder or emotional look on a man's face than when Sunderland had beaten Arsenal in the FA Cup semi-final at Hillsborough, when Bob Stoker came back from the dressing room to greet those fans from the North East. It led to Bob Stoker coming out to Wembley with Sunderland against Leeds United for the FA Cup final. Deep one again. Watson is right in there. So too is Hallam. And Porterfield! Oh, Porterfield has scored! And Sunderland, the underdogs, are in the lead. And I've never seen that before. It's always the captain that they parade around. But today, it's the manager, Bob Stoker. The most spectacular moment of 73. Well, can you beat those eight remarkable goals by Bristol Rovers that put paid to Brian Clough's Brighton? Norman Gall, and Gall was quite clearly holding him back, and this is a goal, yes! And three Rovers players up, wanting the ball, and there's number seven, Fernley! Now for Jacobs again, hit across that goal, Bannister's header, and there it is, another one! And this is going to be the next one, and it's the hat-trick for Bruce Bannister. There's War Boys, number five! War Boys, this will be the number six, I would think, and it is! Is this going to be his hat-trick? It is! And here's War Boys, onside, the linesman's kept his flag down, Enough said. The forecast of the year. We got it from the German aces, Franz Beckenbauer and Uli Hoeneß. Who are the big contenders for the World Cup? Yes, I think it's, it's the same. It it's, it's will be the same uh, World Cup uh, like England. Uh, 66, I think uh, it will win a European team. Italy, Netherlands or West Germany. I hope West Germany. And then I think uh, Brazil. And you would agree, Uli, would you, those four for the uh, semi-finals of the World Cup? A European nation will win it? Yes, but uh, I mean that Brazil will play a good part. But I think too that the possibilities for a European team are greater than if it is played in South America. What about the golden goal of the year? Don Rogers of Crystal Palace won our title in happier days and this came against Stoke City at Selhurst Park in the first division. Hinchel with a chance to get away, to give relief to the defence. Rogers now, a touch on for Whittle. Played again for Rogers. Marsh is covering him. But now if Rogers can attack him, he might have a chance. He's got past Marsh and now he's confronted by another. Rogers again and a goal! Don Rogers! For us, the funniest moment of the year came when Muhammad Ali saw Brian Clough as a major threat to his title as the man who talks the most. I'm Muhammad Ali. The world know who I am. They know I'm confident and they know I talk. But there's some fella in London, England named some Brian, uh, Brian Clough, some soccer player or something. Anyway, I heard all the way in America, I heard all the way in Indonesia that this fella talks too much. They say he's another Muhammad Ali. There's just one Muhammad Ali. And I want you to, whoever you are, you, you are not a fighter and you don't take my job. I'm the talker. Now, Clough, I've had enough. Stop it. <laughs> the last three categories inevitably all point to the World Cup. The most surprising, and what a delight it is to show again to all our Australian friends, that, f friends, the goal that put them through to the World Cup. A goal against South Korea, scored in Hong Kong, and it's coming up now. The long cross, which is knotted down here very nicely, is a beautiful layoff there by the Australians to Jim Mackay, and that put Australia through. But the saddest was, of course, the elimination of England with Damaski's goal for Poland and the near misses that came so close to putting England through. And I think you'll agree, it's heartbreaking again to look at them now, realising that if only one of them had gone in, England would have gone through. Lato screaming down the right side. Le left side rather. Now it's Lato against McFarlane and get duck. the Dockers over there. The shot is on for Damaski. Oh, and it's good! that England might have expected. Peters over the ball. 
chip forward on the far post is McFarland. Oh, must have hit the post. McFarland. And again, McFarland. And Curry. And oh, far post is Peters. And now Chivers. And again, Morgan got in the way of it. And the charge on the bell. McFarland. Clark's all right. Barry squeezed one in. Looking for Shannon. And a magnificent side from Tomaszewski. Well done. done. Well off by Clark. Jimmy's in the shot on the curry. Hughes for curry to try one. That one's on target. And now Shannon. Wow. Curry against Casper Jack. Done him once, not a bad cross ball. And then, Shivers. Oh, by Shivanovsky. Tomaszewski's not there. Tomaszewski, an incredible save. Kicked it away. Good ball. Peters. Hunter, right foot. And he's getting wild out there now. Shannon across. Clarky. Oh, Hughes checks out of that one well. Has he done too much? Curry! Nine ball for him. Far post. And He's given it. Tony Curry. And it's off the line and kicked away. Head turn. Watch Peters. Gorgon got in the way. Bell. And he cannons away. No, it just wasn't to be. But the happiest moment of the year turned out to be the night that Scotland carried Britain's banner into those finals with this victory over Czechoslovakia. Trying to make room. Hits the post! Bramner hits the post! Unbelievable misfortune for Scotland. Still dangerous. Morgan figured across. Jordan! It's there! Jordan scores! Referee looking at his watch, coming up to the 90-minute mark. Referee looking at his watch. And that's it! That is it! Congratulations, Scotland. Well done, boys. So there we are, a year capsuled into eight minutes or so. Of course, many things had to be left out, but I think that's given us all the flavour of the year and enough to hope that we should get as much fun and excitement out of 1974. It just remains for me to say a very happy new year to you all from all of us on the Big Match team and to remind you, of course, that we should be back next weekend with On the Ball and the Big Match with special cup tie editions.